everyone welcome to my channel prostohub myself dr jolsna and today we are going to discuss the remaining session of our current topic impression materials and procedures in fpd in our previous session we have discussed the introduction the main definitions ideal properties of impression materials principles of impression material manipulation and the different types of impression materials and their features so in this session we shall be discussing the techniques of impression making and conclusion and references so before beginning i request everyone to please do like and share my videos if you are finding these useful and if you are new to this channel prosto hub please please do subscribe and support me and if you have any queries any topic suggestions or any feedbacks do comment below this video or you can mail me at this mail id so let's start so i hope everyone have followed the previous session and let us have a recap of the properties of various elastomeric impression materials so here is a table that illustrates the properties and comparison of the various elastomeric impression materials and you can see that the working time which is highest for polysulfide setting time is highest for uh, again polysulfide byproducts polyether does not have a byproduct in the reaction whereas all others are having and tear strength is the least for condensation silicon and the hydrophobicity the nature is same for polysulfide condensation and addition whereas polyether is hydrophilic in nature and unpleasant odor is present for polysulfide and multiple pores can be done in case of addition silicon and polyether now before getting into the techniques of impression making let us see the steps in impression making so we know that first we have to prepare a tray whether it is stock tray or custom tray tissue management is important manipulation of the material making of an impression the removal of impression and preparing the stone cast or dies coming to the different types of impression trays there are stock trays and custom trays so stock trays are used for making preliminary impression and they are of two types plastic tray and metal tray and the size of the tray is usually selected in such a way that the t should sit centrally within the trough of the tray the disadvantage of stock tray is that the bulk of the material cannot be controlled and among the mm, stock trays metal rim lock trays are the most preferred ones because they resist deformation on removal of impression coming to the custom tray so these improves the accuracy of an elastomeric impression by limiting the volume of the material thereby reducing two sources of error that is stresses during removal as well as thermal contraction and elastomeric impression materials considered to be most stable when ha they have an even thickness of 2 to 4 mm and to obtain this a custom impression tray is recommended now among the elastomeric impression material for polyether and addition silicons custom trays are not critical because these materials are stiffer and have got less polymerization shrinkage than other materials the disadvantage of custom tray is that it cannot be used in severe undercut areas and also because the uh, less material is used in a custom tray it reduces the compressibility of the impression so it makes the removal of the tray difficult in some cases so this is about custom trays now the stock tray the main disadvantage was the bulk of the material which affects the accuracy so in custom trays we can control the bulk of the material coming to the fabrication of a custom tray so the armamentarium required for fabrication are base plate wax 0.025 mm tin foil a scalpel scissors and waxing instrument so generally custom trays are made from auto polymerizing resin sometimes from thermoplastic or photo polymerized resins so the resin thickness of the custom tray should be 2 to 3 mm for adequate rigidity and the clearance between the tray and the teeth should also be 2 to 3 mm so the first step is to mark the border of the tray on the diagnostic cast using a pencil as you can see the borders should be 5 mm a pikel to the crest of the free gingiva so from the crest of the free gingiva 5 mm pikel should be the border of the custom tray and that should be marked with the help of a pencil now after the borders are marked adapt a wax or other suitable spacer onto the diagnostic cast now after adapting it trim it back until the pencil line is just visible and then three stops are required in order to maintain even space for the impression material 
so these are placed on the non centric cusp of the teeth which are not prepared that are usually the buccal cusp of maxillary as well as the lingual cusp of the mandibular so stops are made and this is made by removing the wax at an angle of 45 degree to the occlusal surface of three teeth which are arranged in a tripod manner in a arch so this is how we make uh, the stops in order to ensure uniform distribution of the material inside the tray now apply a layer of tin foil over the wax in order to prevent it from contaminating the inside surface of the tray so there is chance that the adapted wax can melt from the polymerization heat and can contaminate the tray so in order to prevent this apply a layer of tin foil over the wax next mix the auto polymerizing acrylic resin and set it aside until it is dawi stage now in order to get a consistent thickness a template or a wooden slab and roller can be used and with practice even this can be done by hand mixing also next gently adapt the resin onto the cast a handle can be made from the excess resin at this time or it can be made later if enough working time is not available and now after the material has polymerized remove it from the cast and trim it with an acrylic trimming brush and all the rough edges should be rounded and made smooth in order to prevent the soft tissue trauma Thus, a custom tray is fabricated. So, it is having a consistent thickness of two to three mm. It should extend three to five mm cervical to the pre-gingival margin, and also it should be stable on the cast with the stops, and it can maintain an impression thickness of again two to three mm. And the tray should be smooth with no sharp edges. And finally, the handle it should be sturdy, and it should be shaped to fit between the patient's lips. now to avoid distortion from continued polymerization it is advised that the tray should be made at least 9 hours before its use and if it is need urgently it can be placed in boiling water for 5 minutes and allowed to cool at room temperature or a light polymerized tray can be made next once the tray is fabricated prior to making an impression a uniform thickness of tray adhesive should be applied on the tray so this should extend over the edges so this is in order to improve the adhesion and these tray adhesives should be allowed to dry and the evaporation of solvent has to happen in order to create a slightly roughened surface now the composition of tray adhesive include acetone heptate and ethyl acetate next coming to the tissue management which is a very important step in order to obtain an accurate impression so this includes the fluid control as well as the retraction of the gingival tissues so gingival retraction is an important topic which you should never miss while you prepare for your exams the different methods of gingival retraction so tissue management is done in order to ensure access for the tooth preparation and making of the impression so in order to displace the gingival tissue the by controlling gingival hemorrhage and also circular fluids so gingival retraction is necessary to expose the subgingival cervical level of the tooth preparation and this step has got great influence on the final impression next coming to the manipulation of elastomeric impression materials which we have already discussed in our previous session so it includes the hand mixing first is the catalyst paste system hand mixing where equal length of the paste are dispensed onto the mixing pad and it is mixed in uniform back forth mixing portion motion to get a paste which is uniform in color with no streaks now the two putty system which is mixed by a uh, dispensing equal volume or equal number of scoops and knead the material until a uniform color is obtained the next mixing is the static mixing wherein the material is uh, mixed into a homogeneous mixture without any mechanical mixing procedure so for this a gun is used for compressing the material into cylinder cartridges that is a base and catalyst with a mixing tip so here a ratchet mechanism extrudes equal quantities of the material so we get a greater uniform uh, mixture of the material fewer voids also present in the mix less mixing time and fewer possibilities of contamination so this is about static mixing and finally the dynamic mechanical mixing that includes the auto mix as well as the penda mix systems so these uh, automatically mixes and dispenses the right amount of impression material 
So um, the cartridges of the impression materials are available for use with this equipment and advantages are faster dispensing of the material, a homogeneous mixture with decreased voids and uh, there is decreased wastage of the materials. Next coming to the different impression techniques in fixed prosthodontics. So there are around 12, the putty wash impression, dual arch impression technique, dual phase impression, monophase impression, hydrocolloid laminate technique, copper band impression technique, impression using vacuum adapted splints and impression using preformed crown shells, functional check bite impression, matrix impression system, cast impression coping technique and finally digital impressions. So I have referred this from a review article by Sumant et al. That is impression techniques in fixed prosthodontics. So let us see one by one in detail. So the first one, the putty wash impression technique. So here a primary impression is made with a stock tray and a final impression is made using the preliminary impression as the custom tray. So this is a stock tray impression technique and there are two methods to make a putty wash impression. One step or single mix putty wash impression and two step or double mix putty wash impression. Coming to the first one, the single mix putty impression technique wherein the light body as well as the putty are used simultaneously. So it's called as a simultaneous technique or the squash technique. So the putty material is loaded into the stock tray after applying the adhesive onto the tray and then space is created for the uh, syringe material that's a light body and then the light body is syringed around the prepared tooth and the corresponding area in the stock tray. Now a full mouth impression is made using this loaded stock tray. Now the disadvantage of this uh, squash or the simultaneous technique is that it is impossible to control the thickness of the impression material and excess bulk material is used. Also we cannot control what material records the marginal details of the preparation. Usually the portions of the marginal details are captured in the putty which are deficient in recording details. So the main disadvantage is we cannot control the bulk of the material. Now coming to the double mix putty wash technique. So first the tray adhesive is applied uniformly onto the tray and then the uh, putty impression material is mixed and uh, loaded onto the stock tray. Now a spacer for the light body material, usually it can be a sheet of polyethylene, should be placed over this loaded putty material and then we have to take the impression. So a full mouth impression is taken in a tray which is loaded with putty material and also a spacer placed over it. Now after removing the impression, the uh, polythene sheet should be peeled away carefully and then the impression is additionally relieved by scraping the area of the tooth preparation using a round burr or putty scrapers. Now after the area is relieved, the light body material is syringed over the putty impression and also over the prepared tooth surface and then the final impression is taken and it will contain accurate details recorded by the light body impression material. So this is the double mix putty wash technique. So here is a video that shows the double mix putty wash technique or the two step putty impression technique. So first a suitable stock tray is selected and a tray adhesive is applied uniformly onto the tray and then the putty material is taken hand mixed and then applied onto the tray. Once the tray is loaded with the putty material, a polythene sheet is selected and it is placed over the tray and it is adapted onto the loaded tray and then the impression is recorded. And once the impression is set, it is removed and once it is removed, the polythene sheet is carefully peeled away and you can also create additional relief by scraping the areas of the tooth preparation with burrs and then injecting the light body over the preliminary impression and then recording the final full mouth impression. So with this technique we get a full mouth impression with all accurate details. So here is the final impression. So this is the double mix technique. Now coming to the advantages and disadvantages. 
advantages it eliminates the time and cost of fabricating a custom trade so this is a stock trade technique and metal stock trades are rigid and so are less susceptible to distortion whereas disadvantage include more impression material required we cannot control the bulk of the material the metal trades needs to be sterilized and the thickness of the impression material is uneven and so polymerization shrinkage can happen coming to the next type of impression procedure that is dual phase impression technique which is also called as the custom tray impression technique or laminate single impression technique so this is similar to that of putty wash except that here uh, we use a custom tray so first a custom tray has to be fabricated over a primary cast that is made using primary impression and then uh, the light body that is a wash material is laminated in a thin layer over the surface of heavy body material and then immediately positioned upon the preparation the purpose of this lamination is to prevent the direct contact of the heavy body with the preparation surfaces which may produce roughness of the cast now the heavy body material also drives the light body material into the gingival sulfide as well as the preparation details so without the use of a syringe the heavy body just drives it if you want you can use a syringe also for injecting the light body so this is about the dual phase impression technique now let us see the advantages and disadvantages of, of dual phase technique so advantages include less impression material compared to that of our stock tray technique sterilization is not required and we get a uniform thickness of the impression material with the custom tray so it distort so distortion is minimized um, and polymerization shrinkage is also prevented even the patient is more comfortable with the custom tray technique the disadvantages include construction of custom tray again it is time consuming and it has to be constructed 24 hours before the use in order to minimize the distortion and also this technique may be uh, causing irritation to some patient because of the residual monomer from the special tray so these are the advantages and disadvantages of dual phase technique now next is the mono phase impression technique which we will be continuing in our next session so thank you all for watching my video please do like and share my videos if you are finding these videos useful and if you have any doubts queries or any topic suggestions or any feedbacks please do comment below the video or you can mail me at this mail id so it's a bye from prosa hub until our next session thank you all once again